Hello, good morning all. Today I am going to execute one of the problem in the beams. That is exponent number 12. Let us quickly look into this problem. A beam of 16 to 60, 16 to 40 cross section is loaded as shown below. Where I should find out the stresses as well as deflections. And uh, observe the physical model. If you just uh, look into this, we are having the boundary conditions that is fixed fixed beam, and we are having UL and uh, a load of point load of 1 kN. And it is having the cross section of 16 to 40. And uh, let's look into this uh, hypermesh software. Let's uh, have the regular uh, steps that is MPLC. So before that, since it is a beam, I need to create uh, what we call uh, the cross section first. Let's do that by going through the 1D command hyperbeam in that standard section in standard section you have to choose obstruct and the bar then go for create so here I should enter the values of the cross sections dimension 1 represents 60 dimension 2 represents 40 dimension 1 let's enter those values 60 dimension 2 as 40 so once I enter these two values the screen will uh, enlarge so you have to check the file details properly. You need to go for the letter F and observe. Yes, the loads. And then uh, go back to your uh, hypermesh screen by using uh, the model view command. And once you did that, return. After that, let's go for the MPLC part. So in uh, MPLC part, let's quickly observe, apply the load. Mm, that is a material load collector. Give it as a name, color, type is isotropic, card image is matte one. Click create edit, activate Young's modulus and observe the, in the problem whether Young's modulus is given or not. Since Young's modulus is not given, I will go through the default values 2.1 into 10 raised to 5. Return. So metal like created, then go to property. In property, go for create property name as cross section type as 1D and card image as P beam L material steel the previously created one and the beam section as rectangular section then go for create edit and observe this law is 16 to 40 whether it is taken properly or not yes it is taken properly after that the next one is the load MPLC so where I should go for uh, the constraints Assign some color, create edit, and uh, assign the next load collector as force, change the color for your reference, create edit. Then go to component, the last one. Since we are having only one property, the component is also one. So let's give a name as beam 12, assign some color, property, choose as cross section that you created previously. Create edit, return. Again, return. So, all the respective contents needed for apply the lo loads, everything we have created. We just need to cross check all this and the colors as and for the load collectors. So, once I did all this, let's uh, look into this model. So, since we are having uh, three variations in the length as well as the load in order to catch this we should create uh, three elements in order to create three elements i should create four nodes one two three four so let's uh, create these four nodes first go to geometry nodes first node coordinate is zero its origin itself fit the screen second one is 300 Zero, 0 x value is 300 fit the screen fit the screen and then next value is 500 create fit the screen and after that 1000 enter the value create fit the screen with lateral so once all the nodes are created I will need to go to 1d dots and observe in orientation basic it is in uh, y is equal to 1 or not 
after that select the respective nodes and to create the elements so once i created all the elements uh, the next part is uh, you have to apply the boundary conditions so in order to do that that is load collector you just cross check whether which one is our current component since i am applying the boundary conditions constraint should be as our current component so I'll do that one so we should in the bold color after that go to constraints since both the nodes are fixed you have to select these two end nodes and the selection is shown in the white color and all the degrees of freedom should be in the bold uh, in the switching on condition then create return so once i did that that's i should after that i should apply the load so that i should uh, make the force as our current component and uh, let's analyze the loads that is available uh, uh, the important thing is we don't know how to apply the uvl first let's cross check this so in order to apply any type of uvl in uniformly varying load the hypermesh software will uh, run through some of the default uh, patterns so the default patterns which is uh, looks almost looks like in this way where uh, there are few things uh, which is generalized like uh, the distance of the uv that is uh, x1 and x2 and magnitudes of the load p1 and p2 so where x1 refers where exactly the load starts x2 refers the ending uh, point p1 refers magnitude of the load at the initial point p2 refers the maximum load that is applied at the end point so we have to apply all these in the hypermesh software let us look into that and before that let's cross check uh, the contents related to that so if you observe this pattern with this here x1 refers to 0 because load starts at the origin itself okay load the initial load p1 starts at origin itself so the x1 is value is 0 x2 value is 300 because from here the load will end to this point so that's why x2 value is 300 and magnitude of p1 it should be 0 because at this point the p1 should be 0 and later on the p2 value should be this value okay the maximum load so at this point the maximum load is this one where uh, one more thing you need to observe that it is uh, having the units of newton per uh, meter but all the dimensions that we are substituted in uh, newton per mm i should change this unit also if you do that it becomes phi okay phi newton per mm so once i clarified all the contents let's quickly apply the loads that is go to analysis and since uvl is also exhibits a similar behavior of uh, udl so the first thing that you need to do is you uh, should go to pressures only where uh, here i am going to apply the load p1 that is load p1 only i am going to apply at this pressure toolbar okay so that is zero so magnitude should be zero and change the load type to p load one so once you set these two and check whether it is normal or not select the particular element and then create so only one value that i enter right now that is p1 but still i have to go to i have to enter x1 x2 p2 let's do those things but to do that you should go to card edit select the load once you select the load it will uh, depicts uh, the white color uh, selection pattern change the configure to pressure and observe whether it is p load one or not then go to edit so once edit option you choose one one more window will appear here you should do five changes one two three four five this time 
the type is fy because uh, the road is acting in the y direction scale the linear scale uh, i should adopt that is a linear variation that is le and activate x1 x2 p2 once you activated we have to enter these values so x1 value should be 0 x2 value is 300 and p2 value is minus 5 why minus because the load is in y direction but it is in negative y direction it is acting downward that's why return then return so one load i have applied still we are having one more load that is one kilonewton let's apply it. but also go to force select the node change the magnitude to minus thousand here also since load is in downward direction so it should go through the negative sign the uh, direction should be y axis create return once i set all these you can go for load step determining uh, the type of analysis where uh, the type of analysis is linear static change the name to say 12 the beam problem change spc to constraints for to force create once you did that road step is also created you just cross check all these things once again save the model then up to start run the up to start shows analysis is completed let's look into the results hyperview click on hyperview so it pop up a hyperview screen let's keep this model in the expert plane and maintain contour option displacement let's look into the displacements i want displacement in the Y directions apply. I got the displacement pattern in this way. In order to get the nodal results, you go to query, select all the nodes, apply. Nodes as well as contours. So I got the contours. So if you observe node 2 and 3 is having the maximum displacements and it is in downward directions. Hold on those values, clear the table. You go to contour. Displacement, change the result type to elemental stress and uh, change it to C beam long stress SCAC. Okay. I got the stress patterns in this way and go to contour, or oh, sorry, query, select all the elements. Okay. The elemental results I got one element 1, 2, 3. So element 1 is subjected to come uh, what we call. Uh, tensile stresses and 2 and 3 is having some uh, negative stresses clear the table and this completes the whole tutorial of the UVL problem so once you did all this uh, you can uh, write on these things in your uh, record and uh, I hope everyone are uh, stay safe in their respective home. Please be isolated. Thank you once again. Signing off, Kiran Kumar.